Welcome to Mindless Entertainment. It is I, God Empress Jesse Milestone. Before we get started on today's video, I just want to thank everyone who tuned into the live stream last night. Uh, we are going to be doing another one tomorrow night. It's going to be the return of the Unholy Trinity. Uh, first off, I want to shout out to Rob Ganyan, who was the MVP of the live stream last night. Uh, that's right. This is a new thing that I'm going to do is the MVP of the live stream. Rob inspired me by being such an incredible participant uh, in the chat last night, uh, as well as sending, I believe, at least one very generous super chat. Uh, super chats are not required to become the MVP of the live stream. Rob was just on it, just saying, basically speaking my mind uh, before I could even say the thoughts myself. And it was just a pleasure to have his insight, his input, and the, the stuff he said. It was an absolute standout on the, uh, in, the, in the chat yesterday. So, Rob, you were the MVP, the very first MVP of the Mindless Entertainment Super Chat. Um, if anybody stands out in the future, they will also be named the MVP, and they will get a shout out in the next video that I do. So that's the thing. It's happening. One more reason to enjoy the madness that is the Mindless Entertainment live stream. Um, but today's madness focuses on my final Patreon suggestion from last month, but that month where they did not get to in August because my voice was broken. But this is for Charles Anderson, um, good friend and patron, who wants to know uh, my best revenge story. Now. I have a handful, you know, from petty to less petty and cool to less cool and stuff. Uh, a few stick out in my mind, so I just want to, I'll, I'll go through, I'll go through them. Uh, one of them is incomplete right now. One of them is incomplete, but you guys know, know some of the story if you've been around for a while, because I talked about it in a bunch of the live streams earlier this year when I had a, a coach who was firing an ethics com filing an ethics complaint against me as a referee under BS pretenses, and so I turned around and, um, and, uh, brought this to the attention of the entire referee commission and uh, in, in conjunction with his pass bullying behavior and now the entire referee commission is intending to file a complaint with the board regarding multiple different referees accounts of him bullying and acting inappropriately etc so with any luck the board will uh, suspend him temporarily something any anyway, the whole thing the whole point of his little tirade against me was I could have jeopardized his career by uh, by calling him out for being hungover in front of people. And so, uh, uh, good job, a-hole. You jeopardized your own career by being an a-hole. And um, I hope you lose a bunch of money and some students when you get sanctioned like this. That would be great. So that one's sort of work in progress. When that, that comes to fruition, that one is going to be one of the most satisfying ones ever because it's, it's not just this guy and it's not just the years that I've had to deal with this guy. Um, but it's also, uh, it's, 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 it's and it has been years, it has been years of, of his being a total insane jerk, but of all the years of being stepped on and pushed around by the coaches to step up and be like, nah, nah, you can't push me, I push back and I push back harder. Um, which is generally speaking how things go with me. Um, I had instances like that also in my refereeing career where a certain referee uh, made an active mission to try to destroy my refereeing career. Uh, the result of that play, um, because I'm hard to kill and I used my wiles, is that that guy no longer assigned Saber, which is what he was doing at the time to try to dick me over. So, um, yeah, the point is don't mess with me. Um, because that's the way I do it, right? I don't do, I don't do revenge usually in a, like, come at you, in your face, right, stick it to you or even knife in the back right away kind of way. I, I let, I let things simmer. I, I play the long game. Uh, and man, it pays off sometimes. For example, um, recently, a, a couple years ago, I uh, was coaching at a club, it's not a very good fencing club, and I decided to branch out and start a satellite program for the club that I trained at, which is a much better club. Um, and it was nearby, it ended up being a competing location. It's not our fault, it was not where we, but we, we didn't choose the venue, we were going into business with another uh, club and they found the venue. Um, but anyway, uh, as a courtesy to my boss, I was, I'm a 1099, so I have no obligation to give him two weeks or anything like that. As a courtesy, I gave him a couple weeks heads up to be like, hey, I'm going to be leaving. Um, I just wanted to give you that time to start your own, uh, you know, to find a replacement for me, etc. And uh, he turned around and just fired me that day. And then, because he found out, of course, what I was doing and opening this club and whatnot, he got PO'd. And he hired a, a former a Russian Olympian who was, who was just coming over to the States, uh, hired this Russian Olympian to come coach at his club to try to basically sink us before we got started and take all that business. And it did, we did take a little hit in the beginning from it. Uh, but ultimately what ended up happening, so first of all, uh, unrelated, they had, their business ended up moving two towns over. So they actually moved away from us, uh, which was funny. And we actually got some students of theirs from that because those students were like, I don't want to go that far. Um, and then what ended up happening was, turns out uh, this guy, my ex-boss, couldn't pay this Russian Olympian and himself. So he ended up retiring and selling the club to this guy. And this guy, that, that club now, it's, the name has changed. It's totally different. A lot of his students are gone. A lot of his top students either quit or went to other clubs. Some of them went to my club. Uh, and I get along great with the, with the Russian guy. So joke's on you, a-hole. Uh, 
You thought you could sink me? I, and that's like, this is my dad always gave me the best advice. It was the best revenge is to live well. All right, so in that instance, I didn't have to do anything aside from just do my business and do it well and just be better than him at coaching, which I already was, and that was great. But I will say, sometimes it does feel good to be petty. It does. Um, and I, I'll take shots when I'm given the chance. And I was given a chance uh, a couple tournaments ago. So this thing happened in the fencing world. Things have been changing uh, in the way that saber refereeing is being assigned and developed, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of stuff I'm not necessarily going to go into. I've talked about it a little bit uh, in other videos. But anyway, the bottom line is, they're, so different referees, referees of different weapons tend to associate with each other, mostly by virtue of the fact that we're getting done at the same time. Our events are ending at the same time, so those are people you're going out to dinner with. Um, I, uh, over the past couple of years, the saber group of referees has become a tighter and tighter and tighter clique. Uh, no space for Jesse in that click. No space for Jesse. Why? Uh, I don't really fit into clicks. People don't like. I don't. People don't like me in their clicks because I don't serve the little role that they want me to serve. I don't really fit into those little tiny boxes that people try to put me in. So all of a sudden, when they when their clicks are based on uh, on on specific roles, people are, are are serving to feed their insecurities and and balance their personal insecurities. Uh, I disrupt all that and make people look examine how terrible they actually are, uh, and they don't like that. So also like the leader of this whole group really enjoys everyone else just kind of licking his butt the whole time and uh, I don't do that so he's I stopped being fun for him when I stopped uh, when I stopped playing his little games and and bowing to him because uh, the god emperor spouse to nobody bitch was bad to me so they're members of these groups that this group that used to be very good friends of mine uh, and some of them still act like they're very good friends of mine when they're outside of the group but when they're all together doing their little thing <laughs> they're so special and so much better than the rest of us to the point where like uh, one tournament it was right before this one they had invited every Sabre referee, including the ones who are not super in the click, out to dinner, except for me and one other person that I guess they decided they don't like. Um, and yeah, that was like very pointedly, very specifically. Uh, I found out, I didn't care. Uh, actually, a friend of mine who was invited, invited me, because he was like, hey, I like you, you should come. And I was like, thanks for the invite, but I really don't, I really don't, don't really want to hang out with those people. Um, the other ref got, got a little PO'd about it, Under, understandably. It's like a shitty thing to do, just pointedly exclude people for no reason. Um, so um, I've just gone my own way. I don't care. I have really good friends. You've met a bunch of them. King Rob with the live stream, Queen Mads, J Matrix, all those people. Those guys are my friends, irrespective of what weapon we referee uh, and what else goes on. I have my people. I don't need to be part of the clique to, you know, feel accepted. Uh, and plus, like, there's this one, one particular uh, guy um, who they always want to include whenever he's around because he's a former Olympian. Uh, they love him because he makes them feel important. I mean, he's also a really cool guy. He's one of the most stylish people I've ever met. Um, but he makes them feel important. And, and uh, you know, he's doing some administrative stuff now, so they want to make sure they're on his good side. So when he's assigning, he gives them all the good bouts and stuff. Um, so this was happening. He actually is a good friend of mine. Again, outside of their BS. He's the one who invited me when, when no one else did. Um, and we hang out a lot because we're friends and he likes hanging out with me better than he likes hanging out with the click. Um, so we had made plans to go to dinner together, uh, pointedly because uh, we had some, I actually had things to discuss. We had important things to discuss and because we're friends. Um, so we made these plans. So we're leaving the venue together. We're walking together to leave the venue. And one such guy who used to be a friend of mine, um, uh, used to be a very good friend of mine, comes up and directly addresses the Olympian, ignores me completely, I'm standing right the frig there, ignores me completely, and is like, hey, uh, hey man, you wanna come to dinner with us? And he's like, no, I got plans. Oh, well, we're gonna go see a quiet place after, you wanna just come, come to the movies with us? No, I got plans. Oh, are you sure? I mean, you could come to dinner and out the movies. Like, no, I got plans. Like, this guy, he won't stop, you know, on the, oh, well, you should come hang out, you should come hang out, you should come hang out. And he's like, nah, I got plans. Um, so, we walk off and he's like, that was weird how he just spoke to me and pretended you weren't there. I'm like, yeah, that's my life. Welcome to it. Um, so the evening goes on, we're eating together. And now there's this other, there's this chick who's part of the Sabre clique who I've noticed pointedly, like is really trying to get in the good graces of this Olympian guy. I don't know if she, think he could, she thinks he can do something for her, or if she's trying to tap that or whatever. But, um, but like pointedly, if we're talking and I stand up to, you know, do something, she'll sit down in the seat I've just vacated, that kind of stuff. So she starts texting him while we're at dinner and she starts telling him how this other referee, another part of the saber click, had a bad day and doesn't want to sit quietly. He wants everyone to pay attention to him, make him feel better. So they're not going to the movies anymore. And now she really wants him to come drink with them. At which point he still says, uh, no, I'm busy guys. I'm busy. Chill out. So he's relaying all this to me because we're, you know, at dinner together. And I say to him, man, you know, it'd be hilarious. What if you and I went to go see A Quiet Place tonight? And we did. 
It was great. And it was especially great because the guy earlier who had ignored me really, really, really wanted to go see it and was really bummed that they didn't go and that they spent time, you know, massaging their friend's bruised ego instead. Uh, so when my buddy informs him that not only uh, did he go see A Quiet Place, but he went with the person that he is has shot and I know and like the thing is I know this guy like I know there's a part of it that's like that feels bad that we're not friends anymore even though it's completely his fault you know and so it's like oh man you're the better person who did the fun thing with the better people and I got stuck by myself uh and that felt good that felt really good really satisfying and that's again like I don't have to do I don't have to take these big strides and steps to get back at people for the most part, when people cross me, a lot of what I do is cool. I'm gonna make you look the fool by just being better than you. And it ends up working out the best, right? There's no like vengeance-based backfiring and stuff that goes on when you do it that way. It's all like technically copacetic. I'm doing it for completely, I'm doing it pointedly. I'm doing things specifically for malicious reasons. But it all reads as I'm just being the bigger person. And it just makes them look all kinds of stupid and all kinds of mean. And then everyone hates them, and here I still am. So that's some of my, so some of my revenge, my good revenge stories. Um, uh, I don't give away the, 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 the nastier details of my nasty. There are some things I've done uh, that nobody knows is me, and nobody ever will, and that includes you guys. Um, but for the most part, you know, that's what's up. Uh, guys, reward fulfillment is actually happening. I have a stack of... Uh, of, of of postmarked envelopes behind me full of autographs. Uh, that person that I still owe for the 10 day live streaming challenge, I'm sending you your shirt. That's all happening in the next couple of days. Uh, cats autograph pictures. I'm gonna show you the video of that tomorrow. Um, if you guys wanna be cool like Charles, you can uh, subscribe to my Patreon, and at a certain tier, you get to suggest video content for me to do. At another tier, you get to make me sing songs. Now that my voice is back, I'll be fulfilling those songs from August. That didn't happen, and those are gonna be paced, those, po those, are, those songs, et cetera, are gonna be posted on the Patreon only. So if you wanna hear me that do it, you gotta go over there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, um, that's what's up. Um, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, all those things. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications. And make sure you tune in tomorrow night. That's going to be me, Madam Kelly, and uh, Ivan Ortega, the return of the unholy trinity. We're very, very excited to bring you some more craziest. Oh, yeah, I'm still going to Australia, and uh, I, there, I might get to do cool things there. Uh, money dependent, very money dependent. So if you guys want me to, like, take a GoPro video of me climbing the Sydney Bridge, go ahead and donate to the, uh, to the GoFundMe for that campaign so that I can bring my trip to you. Because um, that's part of it, too, right? The cooler... The, the, all the cool stuff I get to do, I will document and I will share it with all of you guys. So if you want to live vicariously through me, uh, help me out uh, on that GoFundMe. Plus, we're still giving money away to uh, Running for Premature Babies, which is a phenomenal charity. Uh, I'm going to share that link on social media as well because uh, right now, Leroic is having people sponsor him for his run. So that's cool and all that stuff. And catch you later. Bye-bye.